Hey there, McOwner here, and this is my guide to Holminster Switch. This is the first dungeon available in Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers, the new expansion. In this guide, I'm going to be using the trust system, which means running the dungeon with NPCs, and I'm also going to be running as my main warrior, so we're going to be seeing all this from a tanking perspective. So in this dungeon, you're going to be mostly facing Sin Eaters that have been created recently, like that poor bear that just got murdered and turned into a white bear Sin Eater. But anyways, the trash mobs in the first part of the dungeon aren't really anything big to be worried about. So you're going to be fighting various Sin Eaters, like this bear one here. You'll be fighting some wolf type Sin Eaters. You're going to be fighting some scorpion type Sin Eaters. And that's about it in the beginning. All you really need to do is just watch out for the telegraphs, watch out for any AoEs, and you should be fine. And after you fight a larger group of these scorpion type sand eaters, you're going to run into the first boss of the dungeon, Forgiven Dissonance. And if you're ready for some sweet, sweet revenge after what happened in Amaring, then listen up. Pillory is going to be your standard tank buster, which means a lot of single target damage on the tank. So if you want to help your healers out, pop cooldown, and you'll be alright with that. Pathlight is going to be another standard boss move where it's going to do party-wide AoE damage, so healers, get your AoE heals ready. Now when the boss moves to the center of the battlefield and starts casting Brazen Bull, this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. When the boss casts Brazen Bull, it's going to summon four silver orbs, and they are going to shoot out AoEs in four different directions, and then immediately after shoot in another direction, depending on where they're positioned on the battlefield. During this sequence, the boss may also cast Thumbscrew or Wooden Horse, which are both AoE effects, but you should be able to have enough time to either get out of those after the orbs have gone off, or find a safe space. After that, the mechanics repeat themselves, so just hang in there until the boss is down. In the next trash mob area, you're going to be finding more Sin Eaters, but there's nothing that's too dangerous here, except you're also going to be finding these Switch Gremlins, which will periodically cast Slow on you. So as it's a bit annoying, it's nothing too dangerous. And once you finish with that area, you'll face the dungeon's next boss, Tesslene the Forgiven. And as heartbreaking as this reunion may be, here's how to take her down. The Tickler, unlike its name may suggest, isn't very pleasant, as it's the boss's tank buster, so you're going to want to pop cooldown to save your healer some stress. Skull's Bridle is the boss's party-wide AoE attack, so healers, be ready. When the boss casts Fevered Flagellation, it's going to mark the party with a number of spears above their head, going from 1 to 4. This indicates the order at which the boss is going to dash at that player, starting from 1 and going to 4. So you want to position yourselves so that the boss does not dash through more than one person at a time to help reduce damage. When the boss casts Exercise, it's going to put a stack marker on one of the players, so everybody's going to have to group up to avoid that one player here taking all the damage. However, as soon as that goes off, the boss is going to leave a puddle that gives the players who stand to it a bleeding debuff, so quickly get out of the stupid. After this, the mechanics will repeat, so just keep going until you can put Tess Lean to rest. Once you make your way to the next area, you're going to find a Sin Eater chasing a group of people and then changing them into Sin Eaters. And make sure your group is ready before you start this fight, because once you activate this, it's going to start a mini gauntlet where there's going to be waves of enemies. After you defeat the last enemy in your group, it's going to immediately spawn the next one. And counting the initial group, there's going to be four waves. Once you're done there, you can immediately head up and fight the final boss of the dungeon, Philia, the first light warrior you're going to face in this expansion. Time to take your new mantle of Warrior of Darkness seriously. Now Philia has your standard boss attacks, Head Crusher being the tank buster, and Scavenger's Daughter, which is the party-wide AoE attack. So prep properly for both and you'll be fine. When the boss casts Pendulum, it's going to put a marker of blue arrows on the tank. So what the tank's going to want to do is to run to one side of the arena while the DPS and healer run to the other side to help mitigate damage. Because in each jump, it's going to do damage based on how close you are to each impact. When the boss begins to cast Chain Down, it's going to place a red reticle over one of the players. Once the boss finishes casting the spell, it's going to imprison the player in Iron Chain. So everyone else is going to have to run over and destroy the chain to free the player before they get hit by Aethers Up. When the boss casts Left or Right and Out, it's going to raise its arm and then do AoE damage on that side of the battlefield. 
then it's going to immediately cast Nout for the other side. You're going to want to run immediately to the opposite side of the raised hand, because if you're in the telegraph once you see it, you're probably going to get hit by it, which will do damage, knock you up, and then stun you for a little bit. Taphophobia is going to place AoE markers on each player, so spread out so you don't stack damage. In contrast, Into the Light is going to place a stacking marker on one player, so everybody group up to share the damage. The last ability you're going to want to worry about is Fierce Beating, which is indicated by spinning arrows around the boss. What you're going to need to do is stay on the side of the boss, because as the boss spins around, it's going to do AoEs from its tail, and it's also going to be punching and stomping the ground in front of him, so the safe spot is on his side. As long as you keep moving with him, you'll be fine. After that, the mechanics go on repeat, so just keep up with that until the boss is down. And congratulations, you beat your first Light Warden. And that's all for this dungeon guide. I'm Mick Owner, and I hope that this has helped you in your journey to be the Warrior of Darkness. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. Until next time, take care, guys.